I don't want to make anything work. Yes, anything. I don't want to make anything work. Easy. When her research is done, she can move out. What? No, I don't really need any help with the project. She thinks about it. A glassy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. All right. Bring me the game's off-site copy from my old workspace, if you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory, and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. Yeah, that's the one. You can get in through the bookshop. You just have to do some explaining to the bookstore lady. Good. Then you might know the giant ice bear fridge in the building cellar. The filament is inside the fridge. Just go and get it. In the giant ice bear fridge. I just told you. It has red glowing eyes. It's impossible to miss. You just need to get the offside copy from the ice bear. But you've been to the fridge and it wasn't there. There was a note saying... Wait. A note from whom? Did it specify where they took the filament memory? Zawisa. Of course. Our project lead, Suliswov Zawisa. God, he was always so hell-bent on keeping the copy somewhere safe. That feature creep and the valley of the heads. Like it would have made a difference. The offside copy was perfectly safe when the data loss happened. That data loss was anomalous. And the heads... I won't even get into the heads. Millions of them. Go find that copy from that ice cream maker, will you? Thanks. Valley of a Thousand Heads. You'd like the sound of that. This is getting ridiculous. Can't you just defrost it? Or, I don't know. I don't know about the ice cream maker. Just figure something out. It's a backup of my former employer's project. The radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory, just like the one inside this radio computer. She's making it extra simple for you. The backup itself is destroyed now, but I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. Hold on. If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on site? Wait, what? Who's dead body? You know, we don't actually have to tell the entire world about the fridge. Whose body is it? And what is it doing in the fridge? Y you put it there? You put a dead body inside the ice bear fridge. Okay. Very cool. Thanks for keeping me in the loop. We would appreciate it if you kept this knowledge to yourself, Miss. Who would I tell? My mother? I don't have anyone to tell. And if I did, I wouldn't. I don't care. Oh god, not this again. <sighs> it is not on site. It is in the basement. Perfectly safe and not connected to the front at all. Basement? Sounds like it's technically still on site. And no. Taking it outside the building wouldn't have protected it from the data loss. There's nothing wrong with keeping the backup in the basement. What happened was a freak accident that has nothing to do with how the backup was stored. We clear? Thanks. And here's my Falsund multi-tool. You might need it to hack loose some ice. It opens everything. If you get me the offside copy, then you can keep the Falsund.
our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I can wash it for you, but it's going to take about a half an hour. Think you can stay put for that long? Hell yeah. No, we must run around ceaselessly. It would be torture to stay put. I could use a breather before another rainy day begins. Well, hand it over then, and I'll see what I can do. Must say, I'm proud of this one. It's pretty nice underneath all that filth. I hope you'll have an easier life in your hands. Lillian should let her sword make her decisions. The girl just doesn't have the head for it. Either way, I won't sign. I, Lillian's not the only one who's too thirsty. She wanted to see if you would do it, and if she would do it. I've seen it all before. You think they've got our interests at heart? Rich men are always selling poor men promises we never plan to keep. Then the poor get pushed out of their homes, and the rich get a little richer. That's the way it goes. So, no. I don't trust the fat man, and neither should you. In her mind, the Union is right-wing because Everard is fat. It's that simple, and there's no change in it. She is headstrong, but there's a slight hesitation in there. You may be able to convince her. It's really in her best interest to listen to you. You know how the world works. I've heard that pitch before plenty. Building this, building that, new jobs, new blood. Somehow the people here always end up holding the short end of the stick. Were you dropped on the head as a kid? You can't live off a pittance for long. Do you know who takes the cream of these deals? Real estate developers, construction companies, restaurant owners, players accountants in La Delta. Have some integrity. You're an officer of the law, not some fat slug's corrupt little crony. It's okay. She's emotional right now. Keep at it. We're around.
Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? I prefer the old name, Insulindian Lily. Girls brought them to young cadets when they entered service. Wearing them on your cap was supposed to bring good luck. You know what? No. They bought me misery, false hope, and disappointment. The revolutionaries sullied them. But it wasn't the revolutionaries that sullied the idea for you, was it? She gave them to me too, and your jealous little heart just couldn't accept it. Enough! I can go over these matters in detail with you, Gaston, but not while we have company. So, officers. Mabels don't blossom yet, do they? Maybe on some remote parts of the city they do. Uh, but I think you'll have to wait for at least a month. There's nothing for you to understand here. It is not her death you are investigating. Absolutely not. She died of pneumonia in her bed at the age of 79. This is highly usual. I was 22 when I returned from King Guillaume's Aikira operation in the south and found my sweetheart in the arms of this wretch. The Aikira operation was a seven-year campaign during which suzerain Guillaume's army forcefully united the people in the southeastern part of La Petite Continent, collectively known as the Aikira tribes under the Revacholian banner. I won her back, but while I was dealing with some issues. You were like a dark cloud sucking the joy out of every living thing around you. And you... you... hurt her. I... Uh, I... Those days and memories are gone. The old soldier says nothing. But when his glance quickly runs over Gaston's face, there's an odd look in his eyes. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be anything worth mentioning among your achievements. You should resort to good old lying. Really? What was the unit? Something with colors and headwear. Soldiers identify with those things. Are you asking me? Or telling me? I'll stop you right there, son. I'm old, but I'm not stupid. I know a soldier when I see one. We'll get back to our game now, if you don't mind. Strange. He didn't buy it. If I were a real skull now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree neon style. A snazzy shit ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could like hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops heads. Scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cock courage like this would have proper skull value. <clears throat> While I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage, I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. 
Man, if we were certified skulls right now... Skulls. Now there's a strong organizational title. I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches, flow bears, or skulls. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and <laughs> On the contrary. The part of this presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls yet. Okay then. Let's indulge in some intellectual exchange. These young men seem eager to share their beliefs. You don't know? What kind of cop are you? It's not a question. Don't get into it. The Skulls are the most vicious gang of the Besmertnay. Besmer time, or the Besmerty, the Immortals, are West River Sholian crime syndicates. The nastiest bunch of psychos ever, jacking carriages and getting into high speed chases. Possessing an infinite amount of fuck all swagger, infamous for their non verbal modus operandi. If a skull spots you, he will pull out his dagger and stab you without saying a word. The lieutenant's voice is as calm as usual. A testament to the violence and death he's witnessed through the sight of his firearm. They usually occupy the burnt-out quarter in Jamrock. Or you can find them loitering around the brightly painted bottom-lighted vehicles. Ah ha ha, I can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. No, they really, really aren't. It's porno tuning. Say no to the porno. Oh yeah, Cindy's a right proper skull. Yeah, a true artist of the future. Just like Arno Van Eyck. Uh, by the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards. For all their nihilistic posturing, these young men are not lacking in youthful idealism. The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient toward them. Oh man, yeah! We're not fucking kids, man! Be wary of the abyss. Probably because of how non-verbal their mode of operation is going to be. It's a threat. But I don't. In fact, I dislike them so much I'm willing to drag you boys back to the station just to calm myself down. Hey, uh, there's no need for that. We're just talking here. Joking, too. Stay light, man. Yeah. Didn't you cops, like, have some questions about skulls or some shit? The Union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least where gangs are concerned. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Don't you worry about that. We're gonna make up for the deficit. Yeah, we are. We're not franchise skulls. Well, not yet. Once we get our name out there, we'll have a chance to join them. Because we can be just as psycho and vicious. You'll see. But in a non-threatening and definitely legal way, We'll fuck the system from the inside later. Just be cool now. The damage will be tenfold. Right on, fuck. So what's happening now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Murder? Yeah, sure. Also, he was hanged. He was hanged from a tree. Yeah, I mean, duh. These punks don't know anything. Let's just move along. 
Hey, stop right there. How does one know anything? Ah, this sounds like epistemology. A field so occupied by thought that it begins to question thought itself. However, there is no way these young men could possibly be aware of her work. Exactly. How can one know shit? For example, how can one be sure that there truly is a body hanging behind a hostel? What if it's art? Or just a mere specter? Maybe it's true. The hanged man is merely a prop in a performance. We are the audience, and the artist is hiding somewhere in the dark. So what do you think we know? What about them? Well, first off, it's a statement and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person, even though the statement has character. And I do like piss. The word piss taking place in the world. Things being defined as they seem, not as they are. And I guess it's also about communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. Also, you've got to admit, it catches the eye. And since slowly but steadily moving towards basing the economy on it, attention, it is imperative that the medium itself convey the message. What I mean by this is, we are all pissed and that the world is inherently meaningless. It seems that the young man has a certain expertise in at least one field, even if it's rather narrow. Like I said before, many men keep searching for the one, for so-called true love, which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship. The thrill of the chase, the hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching it. I'm wondering if the poetics come with the jacket, or are they derived from something else entirely? To catch a fish, you'll need to hurl the law many times, and even then it isn't certain that you'll get anything. If you blow up the lake, though... You get more fish in a shorter time. And... For time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly. One must think of a way to fuck the whole world and not get caught up in fucking someone. Because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing. And that, to me, feels glorious. Sticking your dick into the void. Hate to admit it, but in a weird way, He's got a point. Is it a coincidence that here we have two badass jackets and two badass cops? Yes? What is? What are you implying? I'm not sure I understand you, detective. Neither. Fine, if only to end this discussion. Theoretically, if I were a juvenile delinquent, if I were to already be down that path, I think peace is the stronger of the two statements. Seems about right, especially considering your heroic exit attempts. That's an origin story for a dynamic duo right there. So are we done here? Or... You don't need us around for your secret whisper party, do you?
Ace is low. For the rest of the world, the Ace is low is just some cool, Revachol thing, politically neutral. In Revachol, it still holds revolutionary connotations. Also, have you looked at Lieutenant Kitsuragi's clothes? He wears a bomber jacket, just like the ones worn by aerostatic brigades. And those cargo pants look like they could fit tools for hot fixing your burning aerostatic. You should ask him about this. Hey, piss. Look. That ride is. Hey, piss. That ride is fuck. Hey, piss. Look who it is. These guys are. Look who it is! Shrunken cophead material! These guys... Hey, piss. Look who it is. Shrunken. No, no, no. Don't ask and subtle and scary. The boys dream about being skulls. Use that. What? No. Skulls don't have kings. I think. And we're not even in yet. Yeah, man, keep your voice down. Skulls don't take it lightly when folks pretend to be them. We're not even prospects yet. Prospect must be a hierarchical term. Probably in the lower end. Wow, you boys are ambitious. Only prospects and already planning a coup in the skulls. You're destined to go far. He gets it. Passive aggressive flattery. Shut the fuck up! Are you trying to get us killed? Now bring it to the jackets and, yes, start shouting. Please be quiet. What? What do you want? 
the, the jackets? Fuck you, man. Take them then. Oh, man. Okay. I get it. Skulls don't really wear slogans anyway. This was stupid. Fuck! The lieutenant watches the boys take their jackets off with mild amusement. I'm absolutely okay with not having either one, thank you. This case doesn't require us to go undercover or raise hell. In fact, I don't think the jackets will be useful at all. I just wanted them to not have them anymore. Cold-hearted cop. The need will not arise. The jackets are meant to complete each other. If a man was standing alone on a street corner with his written on his back, it'd just be an individual that has taken a liking to urine and fuck the world all on its own is frankly generic. I don't know, Eric. It's cold out. Yeah, let's get out of here. The cops fucked us. Bringing of the law, law jaw. Okay, so we now know why you have law jaw. Why you say the law in a weird manner. And why your jaw does that thing. You had polio as a child. You hadn't gotten vaccinated. It must have been right after the revolution. Not a lot of vaccine going around then. So you got infantile paralysis due to polio, and this jaw thing is a complication from that. Admittedly, it's not very funny, but you overcame it. This little infant survived and became a sharp shooting super cop. So, fuck you, polio. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. This is precinct 57. How may I assist you? I'm afraid they're closed. It says here that the library is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We should try again during business hours. Anything else, detective? One moment. Can you please describe the body, age, sex, cause of death?
We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? No field autopsy necessary. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? Any information on the library card? Good. You have a lead. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? Just a second. Sylvie Malaika on the line. Yes. Hello? Oh, great. What else do you need, detective? No, not me. Yeah, go on. You hear the- Anything else I can help you with, officer? 57? In the cabin, you see a set of steering wheels. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads something close to you. Die. Very smart. Opening the lead should be... This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand crank ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. This orange machine is dead. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand crank. Ice squeaks beneath it. This orange machine is dead still. Ice groans and howls under the strain of your giant Kvalzund multi-tool. Until the lid cracks open, darkness lies inside. But you can faintly make out an object, intricate and foreign. Left there for a sub-zero beauty sleep, a filament memory, with the words, off-site copy, written on its side. Disappointment washes over you as you stare into the almost empty ice cream maker. A scoop of ice cream would have been nice, yes. You gently lift the cube from its frosty bedding, careful not to damage it. We should take it back to Miss Lucan and Kilda as soon as possible. I'm not sure how well unused filaments tolerate room temperature. Yes, but aren't you curious to know what's on the precious filament? There's a radio computer upstairs.
tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. The speaker comes. Good morning, sir. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? Good. Please repeat the password. Good. I've unlocked the production schedule. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Really? She just used the same password? Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Thank you. And goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoke. With a quiet determination, the printer starts printing. A piece of paper unfolding like a handheld fan. A black crisscross of letters covers its surface. It's a project report written by the lead producer, Andrew Andy Schott, about Whirl Untethered, a radio game developed by Studio Fortress Accident. The first few pages give an overview of the capital and workforce, while the rest of it seems to be a production schedule. In its short time of existence, Fortress Accident SCA managed to burn through truly insane amounts of money. The first tranche of seed financing brought in 150,000 rear, but then came the delays. Eventually, the damage reached 400,000 real, with only half of the game finished. 400,000 real? Yo my yo, these guys knew how to party. Let's just say it was a real adventure for their Egaunian investor. Fortress Accident employed 18 people. The bulk of the team composed of writers and concept artists. There were also radio programmers, sound engineers, a CEO, two marketing experts, and a single overburdened producer who developed a habit of popping Porolidon in the basement to escape his obligations. But on the other hand, their obligations were piling up at an inhumane rate, a rate that could only be amended by Porolidon. Why did Fortress Accident have so many concept artists? It didn't. No, definitely not. A few more producers could have come in handy though, especially when dealing with writers, some of whom routinely skip to work because of mental health issues and extremely unprofessional sleep schedules. One of them even managed to steal some valuable company property before skipping town for good. The production schedule depicts the glorious descent into bankruptcy. Not the concept artists. It wasn't even the writers. With their panic attacks and three-hour lunches, it was impossible not to fail. The project was too large and no amount of money could satiate the ever-expanding ambitions of the development team. They tried to make a four million real game with 400,000 in their bank account. They thought they could bridge the gap with pure willpower and imagination. They couldn't. No, even then, success remained within an ever-narrowing margin of possibility that, despite everything, never entirely disappeared. That is, until they discovered the Valley of the Heads. At the 11th hour, the lead designer, Jims Born, Suliswav Jalisa, decided that what Wural Untethered needed was a secret mystical location at the extreme edge of the map. This place was to be the Valley of the Heads, where the heads of all the headless constructs could be found. The player would have been able to choose a head for their headless party member, and each head would have been voiced on air by a professional actor. The world had never seen their kind before, and might never again. So many, the last count 
there were approximately 10,000 heads for 10,000 headless men, all of which could be endlessly recombined. Well, yeah, that and the catastrophic data loss. On the nature of the data loss, there's ominously little information in the production log. It comes at the very end where things get fuzzy and dark, where tables and numbers seem to vanish into an eerie nothingness before the Egaunian investors pulled the plug. What is clear is that one day an unidentified numeric anomaly occurred on the East Insulindian Lintel front, just as the Wirral Untethered project was being compiled that day. When the project was returned, it was completely blank. The team spent weeks on the phone with Lintel, the service provider, but despite their diagnostics, they could never produce a satisfactory explanation or pay for the loss. Mysteriously enough, it seems that the off-site copy happened to be on-site when the catastrophic data loss occurred. It was the lead programmer's responsibility to oversee weekly maintenance of the off-site copy and, well, keep it off-site. An explanatory note from the lead programmer has been attached. S. Lukanen Kilda, the lead programmer of Fortress Accident. The off-site copy was on-site because there was no off-site anymore. Not for me. Not after eight months of crunch. I didn't have a home anymore, so I started keeping it in the basement in the ice bear refrigerator near where I went to sleep. It was perfectly safe there. The temperature conditions were optimal. That's not what her colleagues thought. The production schedule ends with a few random notes that seem to be added sometime later. Four months later, by an unknown author. I am the only one left, and it's gotten rather damp here. A few other businesses have gone under, too. Slipstream switched to making skis, and the hairdressers just left, cursing Martinez. They're right, though. Something's seriously wrong with this place. Martinez. All of it. Still haven't got an answer from Lintel about what happened. All I could get were the physical coordinates of the error on the East Insulindian front on that day. Since the computation happened on air, I reckoned it had to coincide with an actually existing location. I have compared the coordinates to a map of Revachol West. Turns out it's only 800 meters from here. The address is Saint Brune 1147. I am going there to look this thing in the eye. Sandbrun 1147. That's what the street sign next to the church said. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in as the filament slides out of its glowing nest. you again. Are you looking for a die?
you want with it? Good call, Pigmeister. Kuno doesn't fucking care. It's you again. What is it? Anne. She tenses immediately. Chest tightens. Jaw sets. Ready for another blow. That fucking fucker. You're the worst cops in Revishaw. I gave you gold on that tape. That fucker wasn't aimed at you. It was at her. Locker room talk. What are you, fucking brain dead? I've been to plenty of locker rooms. They don't plan rapes there. What did she have to say then? Fine by her? This is what people are supposed to be like? Fucking whoop de doo Yes. In fact, I think she thought it was a little funny. Funny? No good goddamn psycho whore. Seems like they wanted to give Clasia a second chance to play along. She still didn't. All right. All fucking righty then. I guess it's good then. That fucking... Please try to control yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus. Okie dokie. This is just perfect. Just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this, lawmen? Women are crazy. Irrational. That's what you're thinking, right? Also, your fists are itching for a bump. I ask for your opinion. Not a bedtime story. Tell it to your grandma. But she didn't. She knows she can't lie to us, unlike you. Fantastic. So now, you remember how to do your job. I'm so sick of this piss. We should get something harder in here. Yeah, guys! We should get a party going tonight! Why? Uh... Maybe not, then. Success. They admitted to unlawful collaboration to derail the investigation. Nah. I know her. She's just a girl. In over her head.
handled him? She got into some stupid shit with that guy. Shit we had to take care of. Yes, yes, we heard all about it, and the fact still stands. You were more disturbed by the tape than her. I already told you. We fucking hanged him. There's less gusto in his voice now. His men too are growing increasingly silent. The man is slowing down. Looks like a bad blood sugar crash. He can't keep track of all the variables anymore. Who could? It's getting harder and harder to perform one's part in this sordid play. All it takes is a nudge. Come on, Titus. We know you didn't hang him. He was shot. I know you're tired. So am I. Why don't you just... You know what? I am tired. I'm tired of you and the whore upstairs. Next time you see her, tell her, Titus said, Fuck off! That lying, scamming, we're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah. On the floor, Bear drips out of the can into a small puddle. No one does anything about it. What is this quiet funeral shit? All we need is some beers in us. Bartender! Twenty beers for the Dock Workers Union! Why do we make it 40, huh? Why do we make it 100 beers? You're not loud enough. Now we're talking. Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. The window might be closing. The more beers they get in them, the less cooperative they will be.
hits you again. What is it? Starting from the right, boot size 44, sitting across, he spent and then the envelope in the far corner, standard size in the mid, in conclusion, exactly. The fuck is with you, fella? Convince Titus he's being manipulated. You should know by now, Titus Hardy will never falter. But you know someone who might. Fat Angus, the powerful guy. Mr. All Muscle. The time has come. Put him in the pressure cooker. Just remember, it's about more than Glazia. It's about these men and Martinez. Their district. Their responsibility. Huh? He'll get it. Go on. Got it. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... Bring that up one more time, and you won't get to write that report. Yes, I understand, Alain. That's your name, right, Alain? You'll kill us. That's what they do in the Wild North. It wasn't that. It wasn't... We just couldn't get him down, okay? That's it. That's the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... Officer, you will be next if you don't shut up. Firearm. A glass 08 or a 38 caliber pistol. Either is small enough for you to have missed. He's onto you. He knows what you're trying to do. We didn't kill him. We didn't even hang him. He was dead when... <sighs> Shut up, Angus. Fatty! Say one more thing to the cops and I'll... Dennis, stand down or I'll beat your head in. Theo, take your hand off the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. Does he? His closed fist is shaking. It's you who's in control. Let them have their moment. The room falls quiet. So quiet, you can hear Angus wheeze. Angie, where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. I left it home. I can't get it. I'm too fucked. I'm sorry. Why are you so fucking fat, Angus? Now it's all pointless. Because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. I told you just give her up. Lizzie, your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Everard. Fine. I'll tell him. After a long walk along the coast.
You're in. He's all yours. Questions. Not yet. Just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside, behind the window somewhere. So that's a clue. I'm thinking someone's past caught up with them. Either hers or his. Hers, you mean? She's got one of those checkered pasts. The shot could have missed. Could have been meant for her. I like that. Been thinking the same thing myself. My dude. One of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it. They got guns. Training. Years of bad blood, probably. Or it could have been someone else from Cronell. Tell you what I'd do. Check out the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do. If I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. He's calm now. Threw all that turmoil away and became himself again. These theories... Not bad. Don't buy either one, but still. This guy's not as dumb as he looks. Me too. The lieutenant gives a smile only you can see. He nods. You hang the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. The bullet in his head. Another nod. Because the girls asked us to. They were in some shit. Girls plural? There's another girl? Two of them? Take note of this. They'll probably say more about her later. Did she kill him? Cop, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. Class J came down. She seemed really out of it. Drugged up even more than usual. Bug-eyed and gurning, you know? Not in a fun way. It looked like she'd redosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. I've done this job for ten years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario. Only in reverse. Good analogy, boss. <laughs> you don't get to talk yet, Chinky. You're still on the bench. And you keep taking it easy, too, Angus. We went upstairs. Sure as day the Merc was dead. And there was a bullet hole through the window. Uh, fucking... Dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. He means they'd been fucking? Tibbs patched the window. And the corpse. We hanged. Yeah. He's my brother. He's in the window replacement business. Tibbs. That's short for... Yeah. Good man. Bet their father's named Atticus Hardy. Lucretia Hardy would be their sister. Anyway. You may have noticed our girls in some shit of her own. Yeah, she wouldn't. She's fucked if she shows up on police radar. They're powerful, connected to the moral intern. She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she showed up in your systems, she'd be ghosted away. That's all he knows. That's all she's told him. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder? 
Why would I? I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. In a manner of speaking. Remember the two girls? He may be talking about the other one. That's right. It was her idea to hang him. I liked it. For political reasons. It sent a good message. Fella, you think too much. He's off all right. You're gonna hurt your head. That woman is just affiliated with the Hardy Boys. You don't know her, anyway. Nope. You're not getting to her. It's Klausia you want to talk to. In a manner of Remember the two? That's right. Fella, that woman is just affiliated with the Hardy Boys. You don't know her, anyway. We're hardy boys, and that's it. Glad you understand that. You do that. Hey, cop. Before you go, she... Klausia came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. This is where you wash up when there's nowhere left to go. The Union takes you in. Now, she refused that protection, but that's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here, this place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. We'll take that into account. Oh, sweetie, I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. Here, I want to give you a small token of my gratitude. It's a tie. Mesk in origin. The pin is an antique. Quite special. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hand. It's in the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. You could ask her about this when you get the time. It's probably a cryptid, but the phasmid, of course, is more important. Oh, you don't want to hear about some old woman's rambling. Ramblings? Nonsense. Your description of the phasmid- But darling, I didn't even get the size of it right. Measuring things is important. How did she get the size? You were a child, my dear. Really. It's extraordinary what you were able to describe. Now go on. Tell our friend about it. He's proven his interest in the field. Reflexively, the lieutenant read his, his familiar notebook. Well, it was summer. I was building a racing track out of sand on the beach near a tall stand of reeds. Quite a tall one. Many times my height, I remember. When, all of a sudden... Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. I was five and a half in Betancourt in the suburbs. My grandmother had a summer home there. Betancourt got bombed in the war. It used to be quite near, circa 20 kilometers from here. The strangest moment of my life. I looked up and one of the reeds moved. Not like a plant, but like a living thing. It stood up and looked at me. Its body unfolded like some antique toy. I've never seen anything like it. I didn't know this can happen, so I reached my arm and touched the thing. It felt just like a stalk of reed, but it moved, swaying, towering above me. After a while, 20 seconds, a minute maybe, it left, went into the reeds. I tried, but I was only a child. 
There was mud and high water. I couldn't see it anymore. I was just standing there, knee-deep in mud, looking around me. I ran back home to my grandmother and asked her if reeds could walk, and told her they were looking at me. <laughs> of course, she just laughed at me, but I knew what I'd seen. For years, it was a story I told at parties when I wanted to impress boys, that sort of thing. Of course, most people just took it as a strange, amusing anecdote. So did I, honestly. But then I met Morel. We were on a date. Can you imagine? She tells me a story, and it's the most detailed report of the Insulindian phasmid I've ever heard. The sounds. She told me it hissed. It did, yes. Like reeds in a gust of wind. The way it moved, the colour. How some of its limbs were white, like marble. It matched perfectly with what I know from other accounts. It was amazing. If it weren't for Lena, I might have given up hope years ago. It's no exaggeration to say that she restored my faith in my profession. Our first, yes. The glance is tender, yes, but tempered by something else. A thought she can't express, even to him. Interesting. Not all of them. There is some white coloration reported, along with beige, where the camouflage ends. It's hard to say how big things are when you're quite small yourself. To me, it seemed to be taller than I was then, but that's probably not the case. What if it is the case? I thought it was a wonderful story, man. How could she? Who imagines this? She didn't know about the phasmid. This is the main thing here, what makes it a confirmed sighting. She had no previous knowledge of the insect. So she couldn't have made it up, or imagined it. That's true, yes. I'm almost certain neither my mother nor my grandmother knew of it. It was only when I started telling my story as a teenager that boys would tell me, Lena, you trying to tell us you saw the insulin Indian phasmid out there in those reeds? Get out of here. <laughs> they just give me a cider and ruffle my hair and tell me to stop dreaming. But I saw it. You're welcome, sweetie. I do appreciate the chance to relive it whenever I get one. It was just... thanks on you as enthusiastically as my wife has but I am grateful for your assistance officer he tries to play it cool remain professorial but inside this man is itching for some news on those traps good okay and completely empty no locusts? No phasmid either? That's not ideal, but... I definitely left that one stocked. Hmm. Right from the campsite? Just means the Insul Indian phasmid is even more clever than we thought. She's engaging in a well-known self-deception called motivated reasoning. You should correct them. Oh, of course, more clever. Yes, the Phantasmodea picked off the locust and escaped. This is good news, though we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps, make them more secure. Another trip to the reeds. Huh. 
I appreciate your concern, officer, but please leave this to the experts. Unless you have an alternative hypothesis you'd like to venture. You're jabbing at the soft underbelly of his psyche. He realizes he's gotten defensive. Actually, no. Excuse me for getting emotional. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now, and brought some great news too. My gratitude, and the gratitude of the Societe Cryptozoologique de Ravachol, is yours. Heartfelt gratitude. But does it feel like closure? What really happened? Some kind of foul play might be afoot. Theft? Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... Damn it, Lieutenant. Have you no intellectual curiosity? Hello. Lena and I were just discussing the design of the new trap. You have your suspicions. Hello. Lena and I were just discussing the design of the new trap. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed, as though shaken. Most likely the hands of a young person. Hands small enough to fit inside the trap, too. You should ask the red-headed boy, Kuno. A little hooligan. But what would a child want with bags? Oh, my dear Morel. You've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. Delinquents, my favorite. Oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please, let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play suzerainty, but no more field trips for me. After this is your last chance to talk to Gary. Really, Gary? We're getting somewhere here. I I'd love to play suzerainty, but... Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open, and they'll steal it, even if it's bugs. Morel, it's been fun, really, but I need a bath, and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done, I gotta run. No, no, no need to apologize, Geary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. He keeps the language unemotional, but it's in there. Disappointment.
Can I help you? What is this thing? Okay. Okay, well, this is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm gonna go with thank you. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. It's not actually about that, but he liked it. No, you don't. It's not happening. He tries not to look at you. It's dangerous to acknowledge the karaoke man. The whirling doesn't need more sad style. That's one of the styles it can do without right now. By causing more trouble, I think we're good. The Whirling's not a charity or a musical therapy clinic. It's a commercial establishment. You're going to scare away the customers. It's for the... It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. A lot of people got killed because some arsehole wanted to sing karaoke. It's not for bands, it's for clients. Some clients, okay? Not you. Ha! Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stolen. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown. Hard. Fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. I'll plug it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. I'm having it uninstalled, he mumbles to himself. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the... You finally made it, haven't you? People point fingers at you and whisper to each other when you pass by, wondering to themselves, where did that man get such a cool jacket? Did he receive it upon graduating the École Normale Supérieure de Badasserie? Is you are very dangerous, my friend. Dangerous and cool. In fact, no one dares to say a single thing about the jacket. But believe me, they are all very impressed.
The stage is all set up. You feel a little... So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. I can see that. Immediately, a loud feedback noise startles the room. You feel like an amateur. How are you supposed to hold the mic? Should you just sing into it? Where should you stand? Hands. Where do you put your hands? It's still early here. Faint daylight is seeping into the dining hall. All the tables have been wiped pristine clean for the customers to come. Someone's making coffee in the kitchen. But aside from that, no one's really around yet. It would be a much better idea to perform in the evening, no? 